Hi guys, welcome to this video where I show you a bit of night diving at Kronenberg, Hamlet's Castle. Now here's Denmark and here's an inferior country and between those two countries is a strait or a sound called the Öresund or the Aura Sound and where the strait is the narrowest is the castle of Kronborg. Now it's built obviously to monitor the uh, ships going through and collect taxes and it did so very successfully. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. Let's see Google Earth showing off. Kronberg Castle. There we go. As you can see, there's sand in the shallows right there alongside the rocks. Now, as you turn the corner is where it begins to get interesting. Uh, the darker parts are deeper waters, uh, rocks and seaweed. And that's where the fish are. Now, here you see the parking lot. You can simply park there and change and jump in the water in the little bay there to the right of the harbor and you just swim alongside the rocks all the way to the corner. Now here at the corner is where the current is the strongest, about two and a half to three knots or more in the really strong days. And it will be strong all the way on that southeastern side. And you can swim all the way to this border right here. Don't go any further south or you might bump into the ferry going between Sweden and Denmark. But as you swim there in the darker parts, you will have a good chance of encountering cod or sea trout or pollock. And of course, the flatfish are abundant. Now, an alternative way to dive here is to uh, jump in the water to the left of the harbor in this little bay here and again you can search the seaweed there that little reef and the sand for flatfish or you can swim alongside the pier and look for cod in the little uh, caves there or pollack or sea trout that pass by all in all it's a very accessible and beautiful spot but it's tricky and let me show you why now you might get a sense of the current. Um, I'm not moving my fins at all. This is just me uh, being pulled by the current. And as I dive in and try to film alongside the bottom, you'll notice just, oh, there's a fish. Um, as I swim along the bottom, or as I get carried along, you'll just notice how fast the current actually is. Ah, uh, here we go. So this is about, I think, two and a half to three knots of current. And it's very fun, but it's super scary the first couple of times you do it. You don't know where you're going to end up and you feel very exposed. So if you plan on diving this spot for the first time, or if you're not experienced, please bring a partner. Think about safety because this current might take you somewhere that you don't want to go. So please be smart. Notice the speed, this is fun. Sometimes the bottom here is packed with flounders, mating, looking for friends. Brilliant spot. Now the fish that are mostly abundant here are flounders and other kinds of flatfish. But today, oh, look, there's the castle. Beautiful, beautiful location. Now, flounders are probably, or they are, without a doubt, the most prevalent fish in and around Denmark. And it makes up for about 80% of all catches um, from spear fishermen and other fishermen in Denmark. They're very tasty, easy to cook for fish and chips. Nice, easy, abundant source of food for Danish people. And if you come to Denmark to go spear fishing, which I recommend you do, um, you'll probably find lots of flounders lying around everywhere. Now I was kind of hoping to see some uh, cod here or sea trout or pollack with some size on it. Um, 
But alas, all the free swimming fish that I encountered last night were too small. And another trout, this one marked by a fisherman's net or line. Yeah, too small anyway. Now most of the flounders at this time of year, it's the end of November now, uh, have already spawned, so they're uh, withering away or seeking deeper waters to regain their strength. But as I sifted through about 40 or 50 of these last night, I found a lot of good, strong, fat fish still that hadn't spawned, so they were full with either sperm or eggs. And these just go straight in my freezer. Well, I fillet them first, obviously. Oh, two for one. Might as well grab an extra while I'm down there. I ended up with about 15 fish. As you can see, you can catch these fish with your bare hands and it's kind of spur of the moment whether I grab them or spear them. I never shoot my harpoon unless it's a really, really monstrous sized fish. Oh, this is another twofer. Another nice source of food that is abundant at this spot are the vongole, the uh, common cockles or heart mussels as they're called in Denmark. Very nice food, great in uh, spaghetti alla vongole or in your risotto or however you like to cook them, they're just great. So that was it for me, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and dive.